Hey guys, welcome to Digital Screeny channel on YouTube. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel right now. Okay, in the last video, we looked at reading the data directly from Drive because the data doesn't fit your memory for image segmentation, for semantic image segmentation. Okay, and uh, as part of the video, towards the end, I promised to record a video on the topic of test time augmentation, which is obviously what I'm trying to do right now. And in fact, this uh, uh, properly, I think, should be called prediction time augmentation, because of course you're doing testing, but the reason you're training a model is probably put that into production, meaning use that for future. Uh, image segmentation tasks, right? Or image classification tasks. It doesn't matter. Whatever you're training, you want to use that model for future purposes, unless you're training it for learning purposes, right? So when you're trying to do that, like when you're trying to do these predictions in future, uh, it has been proven that if you take an input image and augment it, okay, per, or meaning transform it three, four, five different ways, apply the model to do the prediction and combine the results, then the result, the final result would be more accurate, right? So that's what test time augmentation basically means or prediction time augmentation, if you would like to call that. Let me show you a quick graphic of how it actually works, right? I mean, I mean, what the effect is here. So this is my normal prediction. I have an image. I trained a model, which is exactly the model that we trained in the last video. And I'm applying that to segment this image. It seems to do a decent job, except I'm getting some stuff up here and uh, something else going on right there. Okay. Uh, meaning the prediction can be better. In the next one, again, the same image flipped it uh, vertically. Okay. And I'm getting almost similar results, but you see how these results are not exactly same as these. I mean, this one now is a bit uh, enhanced and uh, a little clean down here. Now, what happens if I flip this vertically? And this is how it looks if I flip it vertically and this part on the top is gone, but new stuff is showing up right there. And what if I just flip it horizontal and vertical? So this, this mitochondria is now diagonally onto the top right side, and then I'm seeing some of these. So you can easily see how by combining all of these, we can actually get uh, the best one. When I say combine, in this case, I'm trying to average it, okay? So if these things have low probability, that will average out if I average them over four frames. If the actual mitochondria has high probability, which I expect it should, then that will actually uh, um, average and then still show up, right? So obviously before I combine the results, I need to undo the transformations and then combine them. And that's exactly what I got right here. Okay, so let's go back. This is the average of all of these put together, of course, after doing the transformations. And if you compare this with what the original label was, this is the original label, this is the ground truth. And you see how this is so much better than each of these individual ones. Okay, so now let's go uh, jump into the code to see how we can actually do this. This is very simple now that you know the logic, but let me go ahead and show that just in case. Okay, I'm uh, back into the spider IDE right here. And just a quick reminder what we have done in the last video, right? I mean, we uh, directly loaded the data from the drive. Again, I, I'm not going to repeat this a lot, but uh, for the people who haven't watched the previous one, the model is obtained by directly loading the data, image augmentation, when I say directly do, uh, loading, flowing from the directory, right? So, and then training a unit model that we put together. This is not some fancy unit that we got from somewhere. This is a unit model that we actually put together using uh, a couple of functions for encoders and decoders. And then everything is from scratch. There is nothing no transfer learning, nothing. Everything has been done from scratch, which means if you have enough training data, you can actually get decent images, decent results. So I'm not showing you the utopian world of how it would be amazing if you have like uh, some pre-trained models and all that, nothing. Even from scratch, you can actually get decent segmentation results from UNET, okay? That's what uh, we have seen in the last video, okay? I definitely recommend you to do that because that video summarizes a lot of concepts into one. I, I almost said condensed video, but it was probably 45 minutes or so, right? Okay, what are we doing today? 
here in this video, we are going to load the model that we have trained that we got from our previous video where we trained it and then perform segmentation tasks uh, via augmentation. OK, so let's jump in. Let's go ahead and read the libraries. Again, none of these are, uh, uh, you know, you should know all of these by now, I hope. Uh, NumPy is in Matplotlib and TensorFlow and random and while I'm Talking about, uh, okay, let me add one note uh, right here. I said you should know all of these, but some of you are asking questions in the comments part, which, which I'm glad to answer and others are also helping answer. But some of these questions are very basic. Like you need to know NumPy. If you cannot figure out, like when the error is like, hey, it's expecting 256 by 256 by three, but you're providing 256 by 256 by one, you cannot just ask, hey, how do, how do I handle this error? You should know that, hey, you're reading your images, you know, in a grayscale and expanding the dimensions uh, and so on, right? So you have to know these ba uh, basics. Uh, sorry, uh, I think the professor background in me is coming up to, uh, you know, teach some of you, but uh, you cannot expect to be a machine learning or a deep learning, you know, you cannot call yourself an engineer if you don't, if you're not familiar with uh, NumPy and uh, some of these libraries. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, let's get back to what uh, the topic <laughs> here. So we ran these libraries and now let's go ahead and load the model and here, I'm just saying compile equals to false. If I don't do that, it's going to it's going to throw an error. Let's go ahead and do that. In fact, uh, let's run that and it should throw an error in a second saying that unknown loss function binary focal loss. That's because this is the loss function we used before. If you really don't want to see this error, there are two things. One, load the entire model like we have done before. Load this including the uh, loss function, right? We are using binary focal loss right there. Or if you just want to put this in production, you don't care about the model anymore, uh, just go ahead and put compile equals to false. In this case, it's just loading the model and uh, meaning loading the weights and uh, the, uh, but not the, but it's not compiling, okay? Now let's go ahead and define my image and mask directory. By the way, my images are in a folder called uh, test images right there. I have 160 of these images and I have corresponding masks and you don't need masks for production, right? I mean, the whole point of production is you don't know how the image segmentation looks like, but in this case, I'm testing them. So I'm loading the masks. That's the only uh, only reason. Okay, now let's go ahead and read all of these. Again, I'm using OpenCV to read them, resize them to 256 in case they are not already 256 and capture them and convert them into, uh, you know, uh, uh, normalize them or scale them to 255 just like i have done with my with my uh, uh, input images during training right so this is all the pre-processing stuff so at the end of this i should have by the way the entire last video was about not loading anything into memory uh, uh, so if you really want to follow that and if you don't have uh, enough memory even for these 160 images then use uh, data generator like we have done last time okay uh, use data generator for uh, testing like, like we have done the last time. But it doesn't matter uh, in this in this case, it doesn't matter if you load all of these images, all you need is one image, right, to test. So that's exactly what we are trying to do down here. So, so far, what do we have? We have our images and now I'm just defining a single image out of those, right? So I'm defining, okay, pick a random number between zero to how many ever images I have. And then let's go ahead and define that image, okay? And predict on that image, okay? So let's go ahead and first run these lines of code so you can actually see my temporary test image is 256 by 256 by three. So if you want, I can just go ahead and plt.imshow test img, right? So that's what we have. And if you look at this, this is my test image. And the mask, I hope, should uh, temp mask, right? So that's what we called. The mask should, yeah, line up right there. Okay, so this is our test image. This is our mask. And let's go ahead and predict this test image. That, okay, so let's uh, come down. And how do you predict? 
it's just model.predict, right? And uh, my temp test image is only 256 by 256 by 3. I need to expand the dimensions to make that 1 by 256 by 256 by 3. Again, these are all the basics you probably know, but that's exactly what I'm doing right there. So now I have my prediction. I called it P0 because this prediction is without any augmentation. Okay, that's it. That's my P0. So if you look at this, uh, if I go ahead and... Uh, in show p0 you should see the prediction right there okay and it looks it looks it doesn't look like this why because this image is not thresholded this is a probability map it's showing that okay the the the, the probability in the middle of this is high at the borders a bit low and very low probability that this is mitochondria all around here even though there is some probability right here and right here which makes sense if you look at your original image there is a reason why it could be confused this is exactly why we set a threshold to convert this into a pro into a classification okay again uh, another lesson right there now i'm going to predict on the image again one more time except this time i'm flipping this left to right I'm flipping the image left to right okay so let's go ahead and predict it and let's plot p1 this time okay so instead of p0 let's plot p1 you see how this is the new prediction obviously if i want to combine all the predictions i need to bring this back to original dimensions that's exactly i added another step right here flip it back okay flip left to right okay so now if i do that it should be back to this so I do exactly the same for up and down. And uh, so that is our P2 right there. And then I did the same for uh, up and down and left and right. Okay, so four different transformations. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm not using image generator to do this, you can use image generator like we have done here, right, image generator. But what do you do with image generator? We apply a whole bunch of transformations right there. Uh, if you want to use image generator, you need to figure out exactly what transformations happened and then you have to undo those transformations. Meaning if you are shifting it by 0.3 in positive direction, you have to shift by 0.3 in the negative and all that. That's a lot of pain and not necessary because all you need is four transformations. Maybe you can add rotate or something, but all I'm doing here is four. Zero, one, two, three, right? So three, four different uh, variations of the same image. And even with this, you will see the improvement in results, okay? Uh, you can do exactly the same thing for classification, but for classification, it's a bit easy. All you need to do is, hey, is this a dog or is this a cat? And if 10 images out of those 10, nine say it's a dog, then you combine all the probabilities and say, hey, this is a dog. For classification, it's easier. For uh, semantic segmentation, it's a bit tricky. That's why I'm showing you this, okay? Uh, Fine, uh, we have uh, all these uh, probabilities. Now let's just define a threshold of, uh, let's start with 0.5, okay? And here the combined probability is basically all these combined, P0, 1, 2, 3, divided by four, and I'm thresholding them like greater than this threshold and convert that to unsigned integer eight so we can save the images if needed. Okay, so let's run these two and plot all of these together combined, okay? So let's go ahead and plot everything combined. And there you go. So this is your original mask. That's with no augmentation, like P0. This is left to right. This is up to down. This is left to right, up and down. And this is the average of all of these. And you see how nicely it's uh, correlating with original mask. And you can play with the threshold a bit. You can go down to 0.3 if you want to see if you're not capturing enough of the regions. You can go ahead and uh, do that. You see how? It's showing like these two ghostly looking uh, uh, areas, but then when you average it out, it, it's not bad. It's only like a little bit right here. So let's load a different image. Let's do this exercise for a few images. Okay, let's select all of these and see how outputs look like for a few random images. Uh, nothing there. There you go. I mean, all, all of these are pretty good, like with high probability. And uh, again, you see that uh, there is something going on here, but not anywhere, but the combined result is cleaning it up. So I hope you got the point. I mean, when you do this, when you uh, apply this model, you don't know how it's going to perform. Well, you kind of know, but it may not be the ideal way of applying it. But by doing the transformations and combining the results, you're actually getting the best of all. You see, if I don't do any augmentation, this is how my result would have looked like. 
I think we should end on this. Uh, well, I'll show you a couple more, but uh, if you if you look at this prediction with no augmentation, I would have gotten a crappy result with something on the top left and down here. Even when I flip it, I see something going on down here. But when I combine all of these, look at this average prediction and compare that with my original mask. Almost identical. Yeah, so I think you're convinced now why test time augmentation can be very useful. So here what I'm doing is, uh, uh, okay, now that we know these transformations are working, I want to extend this all to all predictions, meaning to my entire data set, like all 160 of these. And then, and then uh, let's do that. Why not? This will be a bit slow, but uh, at the end of this, I should get my uh, uh, predictions array with 160 images because that's all the images I have as part of this uh, folder, right? I'm doing exactly the same. I'm predicting the original and then I'm predicting left to right, up down, left to right and up down and undoing those right here. And then I'm adding all the predictions divided by four because I obviously I have four of those uh, up there. And it's still doing the predictions. So in a second, obviously it's doing augmentations and predictions of all 160. So it's 160 times uh, four, right? About 640 images right there, it's trying to predict. So it should be done any uh, any second now, but while it's doing that, let's cover the, uh, uh, the, the remaining part. Again, I'm applying a threshold and I'm saying my predictions thresholded is basically my predictions where, uh, uh, you know, binarized greater than this threshold value. So it's done, you see my predictions right there. You have 160 images, each 256 by 256, and they're all floating point numbers. So let's apply this uh, threshold, and I should have predictions threshold right now. And now this is a Boolean array, much smaller memory when it comes to Boolean uh, array, right? So you have uh, all pixels, dark pixels, uh, zero and bright pixels one. Okay, so now let's go ahead and because we have 160 of these, plot some of the random images and end on that note, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, uh, print a uh, random one. So in this case, I'm only pr uh, printing uh, or showing you the final predictions right there, okay? Uh, so you see my final predictions on the test image and this is the label. I'm seeing something extra here, in fact, that's not bad. It looks like a real thing. Let's go ahead and plot a couple more. If you don't want that, let's plot another one. That's not bad, right? Look at the combined result. It's amazing. If you think that, hey, it's showing me some additional region, I don't like that, then go ahead and change the threshold to 0 0.5, for example, and then let's, uh, let's do this. And now let's go ahead and uh, uh, I don't want random import let's go ahead and uh, do, 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 do. i want to see the same image that's what i'm trying to do here okay so let's run it from that point there you go okay so that's better but this part is gone okay again it's always a fine balance between uh, between these two so let's end this uh, by looking at a few more like i already mentioned so there you go they all look decent, actually, the combined result. Again, it would be interesting to see the individual uh, individual uh, 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 images or predictions. But okay, let's end with this because uh, you can see how the prediction is almost identical to the test label here, okay? So I hope you guys now know what test time augmentation or prediction time augmentation is, and hopefully you're convinced that this is a good way of enhancing the, the uh, quality of your final result. So I definitely recommend this approach uh, for your production, like when you're sharing your model with someone or a code with someone with all the predictions, go ahead and do this. It takes obviously four times longer to predict an image because you're doing four different augmentations, but most of the time it is really worth it. Okay, so thank you guys again, and let's meet in the next uh, video. Until then, if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe and like this video because I know you absolutely loved it. Thank you.